Amy Stevens, founder and CEO of Year of the Book Press and editor in chief of Self Pub Magazine. We're here in the studio today with Mich uh, Dr. Michelle McKnight Baker <laughs> for a little bit of a person behind the author. Dig in and find out a little bit more about what makes her tick. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I would love to ask uh, why is it that you think readers should uh, be interested and want to read Sandpaper Sisters? Sandpaper Sisters, a uh, book about addiction recovery. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of heartache and heartbreak there. Mm -hmm. But they're really inspiring stories. And I think uh, in reader feedback that I've gotten, uh, chances are, Demi, you and I both know at least one person, a loved one or a friend, mm. who has dealt with or is dealing with addiction. It's mm -hmm. epidemic proportions. And um, there's a lot of more clinically oriented or I'd say dry reading out there. But uh, this is a story about... Um, women primarily, who uh, have overcome, um, in spite of very difficult circumstances, and gone on to become community builders. Uh, so are, are they dealing with their own addictions or with someone in their family? They are dealing with their own addictions, mm -hmm. but I've, I've had feedback from readers who said that as family members, as loved ones, that they, oh. they found it to be a really useful book because it showed them they get some insight. Insight into mm. the motivation uh, of individuals who can't seem to overcome their addictions and also what it's like uh, on the inside of a residential um, treatment and recovery program. This one happens to be a year-long program. A year, uh, And wow. the research shows that the, the longer someone remains in treatment, um, the more possible their uh, sustained recovery is. So, so what was your connection to the women you wrote about? I met the director of the uh, program New Life for Girls and uh, the directors invited me to actually be a resident, kind of go underground because oh, they wow. said that that was the only way that I would be able to experience mm. what the program is really like. And um, So you're attending group meetings, I imagine, and right. cooking and, dinner in the... Right. And this happened um, right after 9-11, um, when I had the experience. Oh, wow. So uh, it took, and it was part of my doctoral program, so after I finished the doctoral program, and uh, I kept in touch with some of the women, and they kept saying, you know, your, your book is going to be a blessing to so many people, and I said, but you don't understand, people don't really read doctoral theses. And I said, <laughs> no, you're going to write a book. Well, it turned out they were right. I did They're right. right. Nobody's so, read mine either. <laughs> a number of years after uh, I, I had that experience, I was able to write mm -hmm. Sandpaper Sisters. Soldier's Heart is um, uh, also based on a true story. But it's set locally, right? And it's set locally. Are there any family ties or any families who still have ancestors here in the area? Yes, it's uh, when I when I started doing the research, I, I mentioned to you earlier that uh, I found this trunk in my parents' basement, and uh, the story that emerged was um, of two families who were neighbors. And what sorts friends. of things were contained in this trunk? Oh, how, how big were, is it? It's you know, a like footlocker foot size. Okay. So there were deeds. There was correspondence. Oh, there wow. was um, like uh, handwritten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There were. Um, magazines from the period. There are some beautiful uh, full-color uh, wow. fashion magazines. So oh. I try to cover some of the, um, the I feel way underdressed. <laughs> so I did so much research on Soldier's Heart that I, in my, on my blog on my website, uh, soldiersheartnovel.com, I try to give readers background. Oh, cool. So we can we'll put that up for you. Yeah. Like uh, behind the scenes in and of itself there. Right. Fantastic. But to answer your question, the Hendersons and the Thompsons were the neighbors, a black family and a white family who had a relationship. And, um, and the uh, Hendersons, uh, I'm a descendant of the Hendersons. So I, as, I, as I thought about this story, and it kept rolling around in So my these mind. were maybe your great-great-grandparents who had stored items in this trunk that you discovered? Yes. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And I was trying to decide how to tell this story. There were so many leaves to the artichoke, so to speak. <laughs> I never heard that one. And then one, <laughs> one evening while I was lying awake and thinking about the story, 
um, this boy's face that kind of emerged from my imagination. It was the Thompson, the Thompson son. or the Henderson, the Thompson, okay. the Thompson son, mm-hmm. Junior, this fellow, and mm-hmm. um, he looked at me for a long time and then said, "I'm telling you this story because it's your story too." Mm-hmm. And uh, so his voice is the first voice we hear in Soldier's Heart. Hmm. I really wanted to write in both cases a book that would be fast-paced, easy read, uh, but engross the reader because there are um, the untold stories, the value of true untold stories, so that they can inspire us to... um, consider a different reality. Well, they say that, you know, you can't really make up a brand new story anyway. That's all the stories have been told out Mm -hmm. there. What kinds of uh, issues, either societal or racial or economic, what what kinds of issues do they have to deal with? Hmm. Well, of course, it starts, um, it actually starts um, on April 9, 1865, the day that uh, Richmond falls. Okay. And uh, so the folks begin to see the war come to an end and then it um, flashes back to right before the wars and then moves forward chronologically so of course all the issues that you might expect mm-hmm. um, they um, are close enough to the Mason Dixon line are there any um, issues where part of the family is on one side of the war and the other family is not not sharing views well, with them um, in the opening scene actually that that is kind of established as one of the uh, dramatic tensions. But of course, when you have, it's very unusual for there to be a relationship between a white family and a black family in that period. Um, the Thompson parents, one is a freed slave and the other is free. And so they have um, aspirations for themselves and for their, and for their son, right? Uh, as do the Hendersons. And so, um, it really is an exploration of um, the the men who go to war, the women who are maintaining the home front, and uh, the children who have to survive the ordeal of war, uh, poverty, um, hunger. I think it's very hard. You, you when you grow up feeling that war is all around you, is there an expectation that the war will ever be done? Mm-hmm. If that's all you know. That, that's that's a real open question for every individual. Will we survive this? Will we survive this? And I think uh, one of the motivations for me, um, as I said, as a reader, I'm drawn to stories where ordinary heroes uh, <laughs> surmount extraordinary <laughs> odds, and sometimes they have to go it alone. So sometimes these characters mm-hmm. are going it alone. And uh, so as a writer, um, I try to create a comp- page turner that was very authentic to what actually happened and so people could so that people could um, be inspired to imagine different outcomes um, I think that that I've written nonfiction and fiction I think the power of fiction is you can say what if <laughs> and 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 sometimes it us into that and and sometimes mm-hmm. in our society we live um, we have we face issues in society and as communities that um, that don't benefit if we live in separated out mm-hmm. communities or worlds. So I think that there's both books are very strong in terms of the relationships, the characters, and what they discover when they enter into relationships. Well, I love how this one came about. Do you have any advice for our readers or our viewers at home who are sitting there wondering about that trunk that's in their attic or uh, the box in the basement they just discovered? Well, tip one is don't throw it out. <laughs> we were we were in a huge hurry to help my parents move, and um, that trunk almost went oh, into the dumpster. So. Um, we realized that there was something valuable there, and um, I took it home with me, put it into a room where, when I had time, I'd be able to go mm-hmm. through it. There were papers of manumission. Manumission are what slave um, um, contracts that free slaves. And when I discovered mm-hmm. that there was this part of my family's background that I had never known about, it was heartbreaking for me. Wow. And so. The, um, the process of going through those documents and 
um, thinking about how the story fit together. It was, uh, and it's a deeply spiritual story too. I think um, when I say that, I mean the characters themselves had deep faith. So I tried to um, be true to that as well. And uh, and so tips for just keep plugging away. I mean, for me, it's been a seven year journey. Wow. So take your time. Don't throw it out. Read with the, I don't know, a sense of what? An open heart, an open imagination. And then with historical fiction too, I knew that uh, there's so many experts out there. I'm not uh, oh. an expert of Civil War history, so I sought the advice of, of folks mm -hmm. who have deep knowledge for, say, the medical uh, oh. okay. procedures of that time. Even what the that, instruments were like then. Right. It's different. Transportation, uh, the <laughs> yes. warfare, the warfare mm -hmm. technology. Because well, we have a lot of a lot of uh, battle history buffs around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great advice. Don't be afraid to reach out for assistance and ask your questions. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.